Why must air tanks be drained? A. To check the air pressure. B. To remove moisture and oil. C. To refill with fresh air. D. To test the air compressor. Answer B. To remove moisture and oil. Compressed air in the system usually contains moisture and oil, which can be harmful to the air brake system. Moisture, for example, can freeze in cold weather, leading to brake failure. The water and oil accumulate at the bottom of the air tank, necessitating the need to drain these tanks completely at the end of each day of driving. What is a supply pressure gauge used for? A. To measure the temperature of the air tank. B. To indicate the amount of air pressure available to the air brake system. C. To check the oil level in the air tank. D. To monitor the speed of the vehicle. Answer B. To indicate the amount of air pressure available to the air brake system. Vehicles with air brakes are equipped with a pressure gauge connected to the air tank. This gauge indicates the amount of pressure in the air tanks. In vehicles with a dual air brake system, there might be a gauge for each half of the system or a single gauge with two needles. All vehicles with air brakes must have a low air pressure warning signal. True or false? Answer A. True. A low air pressure warning signal is mandatory for vehicles with air brakes. This warning, often a red light and possibly accompanied by a buzzer, activates before the air pressure in the tanks falls below 60 psi. It alerts the driver to low air pressure, which is critical for safe operation. What are spring brakes? A. Brakes used in the spring season. B. Brakes that use air pressure to operate. C. Parking or emergency brakes that use spring pressure. D. Brakes that are easier to press. Answer. C. Parking or emergency brakes that use spring pressure. Spring brakes are used in trucks, truck tractors, and buses as emergency and parking brakes. They are held by mechanical force, springs, which is vital because air pressure can eventually leak away. When air pressure is removed or lost, the springs activate the brakes. This feature provides a fail-safe mechanism in case of an air brake system leak. Front wheel brakes are good under all conditions. True or false? Answer B. False. Front wheel brakes are generally effective, but their effectiveness can vary under different conditions. Some older vehicles, pre-1975, have a front brake limiting valve used to reduce front brake pressure by half in slippery conditions to prevent front wheel skidding. However, it's been found that front wheel braking is generally reliable even on ice, and such limiting valves actually reduce the overall stopping power of the vehicle. How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? A. By checking the brake pedal. B. By the presence of an ABS light on the dashboard. C. By testing the brakes on a slippery road. D. By looking at the size of the tires. Answer. B. By the presence of an ABS light on the dashboard. Vehicles with anti-lock braking systems, ABS, have a distinctive ABS light on the dashboard. This system, required in truck tractors with air brakes built on or after March 1, 1997, and in other vehicles with air brakes built on or after March 1, 1998, prevents wheel lockup during hard brake applications. The ABS light indicates whether the system is functioning properly. What is a dual air brake system? A. A system with two sets of brakes for each wheel. B. A brake system that uses both air and hydraulic fluid. C. A system with two separate air brake systems using a single set of brake controls. D. A brake system that operates in two different modes depending on the load. 
Answer, C, a system with two separate air brake systems using a single set of brake controls. A dual air brake system consists of two independent air brake systems which control the brakes, but they are managed through a single set of brake controls. What are the slack adjusters? A. Devices that increase air pressure in the brakes. B. Levers connected to the brake that adjust the tension on the brake shoes. C. Sensors that detect when the brakes are applied. D. Valves that release excess air from the brake system. Answer. B. Levers connected to the brake that adjust the tension on the brake shoes. Slack adjusters are an essential component of an air brake system. They are levers attached to the brakes and play a crucial role in maintaining the correct distance between the brake shoes and the drum. Over time, as the brake shoes wear down, the slack adjuster compensates for this wear by adjusting the tension, ensuring consistent braking efficiency. How can you check slack adjusters? A by listening to the sound they make when brakes are applied. B. By measuring the air pressure in the brake system. C. By pulling on them to see if they move more than about one inch. D. By checking the brake fluid level. Answer. C. By pulling on them to see if they move more than about one inch. Checking slack adjusters is a crucial part of air brake system maintenance. This involves manually pulling on the slack adjusters to measure their movement. If a slack adjuster moves more than about one inch, it may indicate that it is out of adjustment or that there is excessive wear in the brake components. Regular checks ensure that the brakes remain effective and safe. How can you test the low pressure warning signal? A. By applying the brakes rapidly. B. By reducing the air pressure in the system to see if the warning signal comes on. C. By checking the electrical connections to the signal. D. By measuring the temperature of the air compressor. Answer. B. By reducing the air pressure in the system to see if the warning signal comes on. The low air pressure warning signal is a critical safety feature in air brake systems. Testing it involves intentionally reducing the air pressure in the brake system to trigger the warning signal, which usually consists of a light and or buzzer. This test confirms the warning system activates properly at the designated pressure level, typically around 60 psi, to alert the driver of potentially dangerous low air pressure conditions. How can you check that the spring brakes come on automatically? A by driving at a high speed and then braking hard. B, by applying and releasing the parking brake. C, by draining air from the system to a low pressure level. D, by checking the spring tension in the brakes. Answer, C, by draining air from the system to a low pressure level. Spring brakes, used as parking and emergency brakes in large vehicles, automatically activate when air pressure drops below a certain level. To check their operation, the air pressure in the brake system is deliberately reduced, typically by draining air from the tanks. When the pressure falls to a low level, the spring brakes should automatically engage. This test ensures that the spring brakes will function correctly in an emergency or when the vehicle is parked. What are the maximum leakage rates? A. The maximum rate at which air can be added to the system. B. The maximum distance the vehicle can travel with a leak. C. The maximum rate at which air can leak from the system without failing the test. D. The maximum time that brakes can be applied continuously. Answer. C. The maximum rate at which air can leak from the system without failing the test. The maximum leakage rate is a critical measure in air brake system maintenance. It refers to the highest permissible rate at which air can escape from the system without indicating a failure during a leakage test. 
These rates are specified by regulations and are essential for ensuring the air brake system maintains sufficient pressure for safe operation. Why should you be in the proper gear before starting down a hill? A. To prevent the engine from overheating. B. To maintain control and avoid overusing the brakes. C. To increase fuel efficiency. D. To prepare for sudden stops. Answer B. To maintain control and avoid overusing the brakes. Being in the proper gear before descending a hill is crucial for maintaining control of the vehicle. This allows the engine braking to assist in slowing the vehicle, reducing the reliance on the service brakes. Overusing brakes on a descent can lead to overheating and reduced braking efficiency, potentially leading to brake failure. What factors can cause brakes to fade or fail? A. Excessive use, overheating, and low air pressure. B. Cold weather conditions. C. Improper alignment of wheels. D. Low tire pressure. Answer A. Excessive use, overheating, and low air pressure. Brake fade or failure can occur due to excessive use, leading to overheating and low air pressure in the brake system. Overheating, particularly on long or steep descents, can reduce the friction of the brake pads, while low air pressure can affect the brake's ability to apply sufficient force. The use of brakes on a long, steep downgrade is only a supplement to the braking effect of the engine. True or false? Answer A. True. When descending a long, steep grade, the primary method of controlling the vehicle's speed should be the engine braking or retarder systems. The service brakes should only be used as a supplement to these systems to prevent overheating and ensure they remain effective when needed. If you are away from your vehicle only a short time, you do not need to use the parking brake. True or false? Answer B. False. The parking brake should always be used when the vehicle is parked, regardless of the duration. This is a necessary safety precaution to prevent the vehicle from rolling away, which can be a severe safety hazard. How often should you drain air tanks? A. Weekly. B. Monthly. C. At the end of each working day. D. Once every few hours of driving. Answer. C. At the end of each working day. Air tanks in an air brake system should be drained at the end of each working day. This routine maintenance removes moisture and oil buildup, which can affect the performance of the air brake system and lead to potential failures. How should you brake when you drive a tractor trailer combination with ABS? A. Use only the tractor brakes, not the trailer brakes. B. Brake harder than you would without ABS. C. Apply steady pressure to the brake pedal. D. Pump the brakes to prevent locking. Answer. C. Apply steady pressure to the brake pedal. When driving a tractor trailer equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS, the correct method of braking is to apply steady pressure to the brake pedal. ABS is designed to prevent wheel lockup during hard braking by automatically modulating brake pressure. This system allows the driver to maintain steering control during an emergency stop, especially on slippery surfaces. You still have normal brake functions if your ABS is not working. True or false? Answer A. True. If the ABS on a vehicle is not functioning, the standard braking system of the vehicle still remains operational. ABS is an additional safety feature that operates independently of the main braking system. Its primary role is to prevent the wheels from locking up during emergency braking, especially under slippery conditions. However, if the ABS malfunctions, 
the basic hydraulic braking system of the vehicle is still intact and functional. What are the three different braking systems mentioned in air brakes? A. Service brake, parking brake, and hydraulic brake. B. Service brake, parking brake, and emergency brake. C. Hydraulic brake, electric brake, and parking brake. D. Emergency brake, anti lock brake, and service brake. Answer B. Service brake parking brake, and emergency brake. In air brake systems, there are typically three different braking systems. Service brake, this is the primary braking system used during normal driving. It is operated using the brake pedal to apply and release the brakes. It controls the speed of the vehicle and brings it to a stop. Parking brake, this system is used to keep the vehicle stationary when it is parked. It is mechanically operated and holds the vehicle stationary even if air pressure is lost. Emergency brake. This system is designed to engage automatically in the event of a loss of air pressure in the service brake system. It acts as a safety feature to stop the vehicle during an emergency if the service brake fails. What is the purpose of the service brake system in air brakes? A to keep the vehicle stationary when parked. B, to apply and release the brakes during normal driving using the brake pedal. C, to engage the brakes in case of an air pressure loss. D, to control the braking when pulling a trailer. Answer, B, to apply and release the brakes during normal driving using the brake pedal. The service brake system in air brakes is the main braking mechanism used under normal driving conditions. It is operated by the driver through the brake pedal. When the driver presses the brake pedal, air pressure is directed to the brake chambers, causing the brakes to engage and slow the vehicle. Releasing the pedal reduces the air pressure, allowing the brakes to disengage. Air brakes use which of the following to operate? A. Hydraulic fluid. B. Engine power. C. Electric current. D. Compressed air. Answer D. Compressed air. Air brakes operate using compressed air. This system utilizes an air compressor to build up air pressure, which is then stored in air tanks. When the brake pedal is pressed, this compressed air is delivered to the brake chambers, activating the brakes. The use of compressed air makes these brakes powerful and effective for large commercial vehicles. Which system in air brakes applies and releases the brakes during normal driving? A. Parking brake system. B. Emergency brake system. C. Service brake system. D. Hydraulic brake system. Answer. C. Service brake system. The service brake system in air brakes is the primary system used for regular driving operations. It is controlled by the brake pedal inside the cab. When the driver presses the brake pedal, compressed air is channeled to the brake chambers, causing the brakes to engage and slow the vehicle down. What is the purpose of the emergency brake system in air brakes? A. To automatically adjust the brake pressure. B. To engage when the regular brakes fail. C. To provide additional braking power during normal driving. D. To reduce the brake temperature. Answer. B. To engage when the regular brakes fail. The emergency brake system in air brakes is designed as a backup safety mechanism. It activates automatically in case of a failure in the service brake system, such as a significant loss of air pressure. Which of the following is a key aspect of air brake maintenance? A. Regular tire rotation. B. Frequent oil changes. C. Ensuring proper air pressure. D. Checking the electrical system. 
Answer, C, ensuring proper air pressure. Maintaining the correct air pressure is crucial for the effective operation of air brakes. Regular checks and adjustments are necessary to ensure that the air compressor is functioning correctly and that there are no leaks in the system. Proper air pressure is essential for the brakes to function correctly and safely, as it is the force that activates the brake mechanisms.